What's going on, Warriors? It's your boy, Lionheart. And um, <laughs> feels good. I'm doing good. I hope you guys are feeling good. And we're gonna get into this one the long awaited Resident Evil 4 remake review. I know this is long overdue. There's good reason for this. And sorry, I know. I know. I've been letting you guys down on the content. But always remember, it's quality, not quantity. I want to give you guys videos, discussions, where it comes from my heart. It means something. I'm not just doing it just because everyone else is talking about it. If I don't have something to add genuinely from my heart, my feelings, my perspective, then I'm not going to talk about it because I feel like that will come across as fake. And I appreciate every single one of you that watches, that likes, that subscribes, that shares, that clicks that bell icon to get notifications when my videos are uploaded. I appreciate you, man. And everybody new that is just checking out the channel, I appreciate you, right? So I'm not a fraud. I don't like frauds. So I want to be as real as I am in my videos as I'm in, you know, real life in general. That's the reason. But Resident Evil 4 Remake. We got to talk about this game. Very important. So, this game, amazing. I played through the first time round. You see my live stream, I streamed it. And I had a really, really good time playing Resident Evil Remake. And the first time round that I played it, took me like I think 29 hours and it was hard it was fun it was just everything I needed Resident Evil to be it satisfied me I loved every single second there was a little less more little less revision cutscenes than I thought but the character development through the environments, through the characters interacting as they're going through the stages. Be honest, I'm talking about Leon and Ashley. And if you watch my streams, I was not enjoying Ashley at all. She was a bloody liability i couldn't stand that character by the end of the game i love this character she is officially one of my waifus ashley is amazing and i didn't like her when the, when the game first started she was getting in the way she was irritated she was annoying i couldn't stand her i um, had to Played the game in a way that protects her. She was just a liability. Until when I start to get better at the game. She's not a liability. She is an asset. She is a unique part of the game's system. And it's enjoyable. I actually had a lot of fun. The puzzles were amazing. Resident Evil 4 Remake has got puzzles. They brought the puzzles back. These guys get it. The enemies. The suspense. The having to figure out how to beat certain enemies. Like the enemies of the armor. The Las Plagas. The um, Ponytail Chan. Um, the Bulls. The guys of the Hammer. Um, you know, if you watch my streams, you know, you know what I'm referencing when I say all these type of words. Right? It's just... 
It was a good time, man. The enemies with the the claws and they were blind. So you had to like sneak past them and stealth killed them in the back. Once stealth killed them, but take off massive amounts of damage. Shoot a bell to get their attention, then attack them from behind. The different weapons, the outfits, there's multiple outfits in the game. There was a lot, man, in that game, and it was fun. Lots of different enemies, different types of enemies, the way you approach them. It had a almost perfect balance between action, stealth, horror, mysterious, and, and just character-driven story. It was amazing. I enjoyed every second of that game. When I played it through the first time round in standard. And that was my best experience of the game. Then I played the game again in hardcore. And that was okay. It was a decent experience. Uh, obviously it felt easier. Um, than standard. You know, because standard you're first going through on the first time round. So of course everything's going to be harder. And... I don't really feel... I feel like Hardcore is the balanced experience of Resident Evil. Although it's still got its problems, Hardcore, more or less balanced. And then we get to Professional Difficulty, where the game is supposed to come alive. And I got to say, Professional Difficulty is... The Achilles heel of what would other be a masterfully constructed game. They've ruined this game in Professional Difficulty. Professional Difficulty is the last in life of Resident Evil. Where you are challenged to the point of mastering the game. And just being able to know that the only reason you can play through professional difficulty and you can just do everything to mathematical precision is because of how much you play the game, you're knowledge knowledgeable about the game, and you enjoy the game and you know what's happening. Resident Evil has always been a sum of mathematical precision. You always know where everything is, what's coming, where it's coming, and you just have to be able to put the knowledge into practice in real time. For the sake of difficulty, they took all that. Completely forsaken. <laughs> it's another... Square Enix game. Oh no, that's Square Enix. This is Capcom. Sorry. But that's a Square Enix game. Yeah, but they... Oh no, that's for Spoken, I think. Yeah, it's for Spoken. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> so yeah, they did forsake the mathematical precision of the game in exchange for just nonsense and just extreme... Extreme nonsense. Extreme nonsense. It's not hard. It just doesn't make sense. Example. You shoot an And this in my streams. This I streamed the whole playthrough of Resident Evil live. Only in standard. Right? I didn't stream it in hardcore. Because I wanted to play with different outfits. And what I noticed is uh, people didn't like the alternate outfits for Leon. Right? But I liked it. So I wanted to enjoy my experience with the um, outfits that I bought. So that's the reason I didn't stream uh, my hardcore and professional runs. I played the game in standard, then I played it in hardcore, then I played it in professional, then I played it in professional again. All right, And that's one of the reasons why it's taken this long to do this review. And so I'm playing the game professional. And it's just so broken. 
it doesn't make any sense. The game constantly cheats. You can get stun locked in the game. Where enemy can... There's a push in the game. The Donado's got a push. There is literally no way to counter the push. Can't duck it. You can't run away from it. Because the enemies run faster than you. And they teleport to... Let's say there's like a... A section. Where you, the enemies are there and there. And you have to run here. It's very difficult to run past these enemies when that's the only route you have to and you're being chased by other enemies these guys can move faster than you and they've got a push that has got incredible amount of range and they can run faster than you and you can't dodge duck or counter the push an enemy can push you and then you can get hit, uh, pushed into an, an attack so an enemy can hit you and another enemy can throw a firebomb. And another enemy can grab you. And then another enemy can hit you, you're dead. Or another enemy can hit you with an axe or whatever, or a knife. Another enemy can hit you. Then another enemy can push you. All this you can't get out of. And then the enemy can hit you and you're dead. An enemy can throw a, a firebomb, a Molotov cocktail. And another enemy can throw a Molotov cocktail. Another enemy can hit you, you're dead. You can get hit with an arrow. And then the enemy can grab you. I don't know, fire can hit you. And you're dead. An arrow can hit you. Another arrow can hit you. An enemy can throw fire. You're dead. Stun lock. And there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing. When you do a, an attack. Right, so you shoot the enemy in the leg, they get stunned, you run up to hit them, there is no invulnerability frames. You can get hit any time before the attack hits, during the attack, and in your recovery, you can get hit. There is no AOE, area of attack. So let's say, for example, you've got four enemies bunched up together. You will do your roundhouse kick, and you're going to hit only one enemy. And the other three enemies are still right there. Even though they're close. They don't get hit. What? I don't understand. You shoot enemies in the head. And they don't get stunned. For you to attack them. And if they do. It happens like. Maybe 4% of the time. 97%. I'll say about. Is it about being too raw, bruv? Okay. 96. 96% of the time. Alright. 95% of the time. Yeah. 95. 95% of the time, the enemies will not get stunned when you, when you headshot them. 98% of the time, they will not get stunned whether you shoot their leg or you shoot their head. You will kill them by shooting them in the head multiple times. Or in the leg multiple times. Hoping that they're going to get stunned. And the enemies are all meat shields. It's ridiculous. Even compared to hardcore. It makes no sense. How, how much health they have. You can hit so many enemies. Shoot them so many times. And they just don't die. There is a mechanic in the game. When you hit an enemy. Like one of the Ganados. And they go down. And then sometimes. They will resurrect with the Lost Pluggers. Right? And then they just become faster. Like really fast. They got them tougher. Uh, they got armor. And they run at you. And they can grab you. And do just make the experience very bad. But what happens is. If you go close to them. You will get a prompt. Where you can stab them. With the knife. And this is a mechanic that stops them. From the last plug us. Resurrecting them. And it works in normal. And it works in hardcore. In professional. The mechanic that is there. To stop the last plug us from resurrecting the Ganado. Doesn't even work. Well most of the time it doesn't work. 
90% of the time it work. It doesn't work. 10% of the time it will work, I guess. I stopped doing it after a period of time because it just put me in a really bad situation. I run up to go hit, to stab the Lost Pluggers and then it awakens them and then the things that the, the blade Lost Plugger starts go flailing everywhere because there's recovery animation but there's no invulnerability animation. You literally can get hit by the Ganado. And if, if another enemy is around, they can just grab you or teleport to where you are and hit you. And before you realize it, you're stun locked, dead. So I never put myself in that situation anymore. But when you go up to them and you try to stab them to stop the resurrection from happening, it's a mechanic in the game. It's what it's designed for. It, it, it accelerates the transformation and the resurrection and then they just immediately explode into the last plug us um you know the head exploding mode and then they just come after you like but the mechanic is designed to stop that from happening but it accelerates it or it doesn't work and it just it's just weird you know the way enemies will detect you when they're not supposed to detect you and you know they don't they're not supposed to detect you because they will they will say yes and then they'll do that so they'll start pointing in one direction and then they'll just home in to where you are it's like the end it's like just because the game wants to detect you they they the animation it tethers you get tethered they get that they the alerts of everybody is tethered to you and it's just irritating. But at the same point, you can fire a rocket launcher at one enemy or a sniper rifle or a shotgun in an area with a lot of the um, Ganados and nobody will hear it. You can literally fire a sniper rifle with no silencer, take out somebody, uh, one of the, the zombies, the Ganados, and nobody, nobody hears it. Nobody will turn around. But then if one enemy sees you, then they all see you. Oh. I'm sad about professional difficulty. Resident Evil was always a game that was just a sum of mathematical precision. It had so much heart and charm and just a beautiful game, man. The characters, the experience, the adventure, the areas, the music, the vibe, the environment. This game has got everything except the heart of the original. It has everything else. It's got the characters, it's got the better graphics, it's got the refined up-to-date system i'm not gonna say refined system but up-to-date system <sighs> but it's the failure to stick the landing with professional difficulty that ruins the game i've played the game in professional twice and i genuinely feel i don't want to play resident evil remake again i don't want to do it i don't want to play normal again I don't want to play in hardcore, but I don't enjoy professional. And we've got mercenaries, which is fun. And there's no Ada, there's no Leon, there's none of the other characters. And there's no multiplayer. And there's no separate ways. Ada's own story. What are we doing? I mean, when they release separate ways as DLC, it had better be more. It better be an expansion. I do not want to see a separate ways that is the same as the one that was on the PlayStation. I don't want to see that. Because then that would just wind me up and make me think that this is something that they could have put in the final game. They just chose not to. It's sad that there's no separate ways 
Ada, I want to experience Ada's story in Resident Evil. And it's not there. Hmm. Mercenaries. No multiplayer. Hmm. Professional difficulty. It's so... It's so badly balanced. And just broken. It's just constant cheating. It's so bad. The game is literally not designed for you to play it. You cannot do a no damage run in that game. You can't do it. From New Game Plus. Now, let's get on to why it's taking me so long to do this review. I actually stopped playing Resident Evil uh, for Remake because I was just getting cheated. And I was, getting, I was getting a bit irritated, if I'm being absolutely honest with you. So, I'm fighting um, Ponytail-chan, yeah? And I leave Ponytail-chan um, in one area, right? And then I run to the other side of the map, right? And then I'm fighting the, the chainsaw people, the, two, the chainsaw twins. And then, all of a sudden, when I open the door, right, like the metal door, in like the mines. Was it the mines? No, no, it wasn't the ponytail child. It was the um, the chainsaw guy, right? So I was fighting the two chainsaw, uh, the two chainsaw twins. And then there was the chainsaw guy downstairs where the... Where the bombs were. And then they were chasing me. I, I got them out of the room. Where the button was. Stunned them. Stabbed them. Left them on the floor. Ran out the door. But then you know you can see the smoke of the chainsaw. Hit the button. Ran outside. Right, I did this so that I could have a clear run. Where they're not near the door at the bottom. I waited for them to be where I was. At um, Yeah, I waited them to be near where I was. When I went down the stairs. And then I opened the door. Now I saw the smoke. But it wasn't registering in my brain. Because, you know, I'd auto-programmed my setup. I'm out of here. Um, they're upstairs. But I did the motions. By the time I locked, unlocked the door and opened, that's when I saw the smoke. But it wasn't registering in my brain. And then the chainsaw people were right there. And then an enemy was just there and grabbed me and I died. And I thought to myself, how did this happen? And I died, by the way. And I thought to myself, and I hadn't saved, right? Because I was doing like as less saves as possible. And I thought to myself, how did I just die? There was no enemy. When I ran down, there was no enemies. None. So within a second of losing a line of sight with the stairs and the door, the chainsaw um, guy, the one chainsaw guy, had teleported to where the door was and an enemy had appeared grabbing me. It's PlayStation. So I just pressed record and I looked at it again and again and again and I was flabbergasted at the cheating. Like the teller, literally no enemy, line of sight. This is my line of sight. Unlock the door and then all of a sudden I open the door, chainsaw guy there, I'm getting grabbed. I look there, there's a zombie. How, what? There was nobody there. There's no way it takes you, it, you can come down the stairs, walk around down that bit and come to my side in one second. It's not possible. No matter how fast they run. So that was the, the straw that broke the camel's back. So I stopped playing. And I've been playing, I played Resident Evil um, Village. I Resident Evil 7. And I played Resident Evil 2 Remake. Yeah. 
I played all those games in the hardest difficulty in between playing Resident Evil 4 and I stopped. That's why it's been... Because I think I played... Like, I finished Resident Evil about four weeks ago when I was streaming it. So you to think, what's taking me so long? Ta-da! Resident Evil 7 is even better than I remember. That game is the sum of mathematical precision. That game is the most fun, the most straightforward, enjoyable, but still thrilling games in the hardest difficulty if you can remember what to do, where to go, where everything is. Because everything is set. You know where, if you know how to move and what's coming and what area, you can get through the whole game without taking any damage. And just get through the game. If you can't remember, that game is an absolute nightmare. But you have to know, but there are no random variables you i literally if you feel like you're playing a completely balanced video game the same thing with resident evil um 2 remake precision play through the hardest difficulty not a problem not a problem everything is so meticulously put together and constructed same thing with resident evil village Spot on, beautifully constructed world. There is no um, bugs. There's no glitches to skank you. Nothing. Then we got Resident Evil Remake. I came back to it. And immediately I got hit with the reality of how broken professional is. It's completely unbalanced. They made it unbalanced because they didn't want people to say the game is too easy to be able to finish the game immediately within a week of the game being on release. They sacrificed the balance and legit legitimacy of an enjoyable experience for a, a replica of Elden Ring type difficulty. Where the difficulty comes through getting past challenges that you are not equipped to deal with. The mechanics do not allow you to get through a certain experience. It's like an enemy has an attack and the attack is active for... It's got an attack like that for 7 seconds. And you've got an evade. And if you are near him. When he does that attack. You can evade. And your evade is active. It's got invulnerable frames. Which are active. For four seconds. How do you escape that? If the attack has got an active hitbox. For seven seconds. Which means as long if you're here. And it's a massive area it covers where you can't run out, you can't dodge, you can't jump. You can't do any type of moves that's got invincible animation to extend it. Seven seconds active. The roll is four seconds. You can't escape. The only option is not to be there when it happens. But the enemy can throw that attack out at any time. So the only way not to fight him is not to engage him or stay at a distance, which is an option. Because if you don't get close, certain attacks won't hit. Enemies have got incredible, incredible um, homing and damage. Randomly, an enemy can just take off 80%, 90% damage. And you're like, what the hell is this? What just happened? And you go back and look at your replay. And yep, you had a full bar of health. Or you had an 80% or 90% of health. And that one attack just took all of it off. It's random. The only thing I will say about that is that 
was in Resident Evil 7, um, Resident Evil 7 as well. I've got to admit, that was in 7 as well, yeah. It wasn't in Village and it wasn't in Resident Evil 2 Remake. That absolute nonsense. You just get hit with a random hit. And it would just randomly. It's like a random generator. It would could randomly just say. You're dead. Done. This game has got that. Right. So it's just frustrating things like that. To just ru ruin the experience. And I genuinely feel. That playing the game. In standard difficulty. The first time round. Is going to be the absolute best experience is the best experience of that game that's why i'm so happy that i recorded myself playing that game my first time playing because i can cherish that struggle that enjoyment of the unknown because now it's gone and i can't get that in professional because it's just an unbalanced mess that i can't enjoy the game in professional because of how broken it is. And that's sad man. Because let's say. My experience playing the game. Fresh. In standard difficulty. That game easily. I give that game a 10 out of 10. Easily. In professional. Because now I know what's coming. And because of the utter nonsense. In that game. I will give Resident Evil 7. A 7 out of 10. Because the cheating is so bad. It ruins the experience. And it's just... It's cheap. They literally just wanted to make a really difficult game. On par with something like Elden Ring. But this is Resident Evil. It's a game of precision. It's a mathematical equation. Right? So you can't break the mathematical equation. Just to make it difficult. But... There's certain parts of me that does get it. Because even when the demo, Resident Evil demo came out, you had people were putting out videos saying, oh, the game is going to be too easy. The counter is too easy to do. You can counter everything in the game. Leon's um, melee attack, especially his boot, is overpowered. And then when the game comes out, the same people that were putting those videos out are the same people that finished the game in professional difficulty within the first um, two to three days of the game on release. And then giving tips on how to do this, that and the other. But they don't have any streams of them playing the game live. Because those are the same people that play the game with mods or debug room. Playing it on PC. You give advice to people on how to do something, but you yourself can't do it because you're playing it on mod with mods. Like a nine-year-old could play the game with mods, switch on certain modifications, or the um, switch on some um, options in the debug room and get through the game easier. There is tiny little things that you can do to make a, the whole game easier. I could name two now. Made the enemy slower and increase the attack range, the damage of weapons. Done. Enemy slower, increase the damage of your weapons. AoE on attacks. Enemies AoE is um, dramatically reduced. There you go. Right there. Game is a uh, game is much more balanced. I don't know, man. I don't know. I do love the game. It's the, it is an enjoyable experience. The first time around I played it. But the professional difficulty. The mercenaries mode being single player only. Not multiplayer. And there being only like, what, I think four characters. Leon. Um, Leon. I forgot his name. I think it's Carlos or Miguel. I can't remember the guy's name. Right? And he's a Spanish guy. And then you've got Calza and Hunk. And that's it. No Wesker. No Ada. No nothing. 
No other stages, just those characters. And no separate ways. <sighs> hmm. It's a good game. I rate it up there. It's not as it's not as good as Resident Evil Village. Not as good as Resident Evil 8. Not as good as Resident Evil Remake. I'll put it like that. If pro Professional was balanced, then I would have put this maybe second to Resident Evil. Because the for me, since the new birth of Resident Evil games, Resident Evil 7 is the number one game. Three. It's Resident Evil 7, Resident Evil Remake, Resident Evil Village, then Resident Evil 4 Remake. But if the professional difficulty was more balanced, so that I could keep on enjoying the game, enjoying the experience, then it would be Resident Evil Village, Resident Evil 4 Remake, Resident, Resident, Evil, yeah, Resident Evil 7, Resident Evil... No, Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 2 Remake, Resident Evil 4 Remake, and then Resident Evil Village. But even though Resident Evil Village is a godlike game, man. But I really love this game. But it's just that, as I said, the professional ruins the game. Where I just feel like I cannot enjoy the game. And you, they can't fix it. This game, Resident Evil 4 Remake, cannot be fixed. Because the way they have balanced the game in so many areas... They've made it. So enemies can't get stunned when they get shot. So that mechanic is gone. When you shoot enemies in the leg. They can't get stunned. So that mechanic is gone. Enemies. Um, add, when they're on the floor. And you try to stab them. To take the last plugas. It's. It's random. Playing professional difficulty. It feels like I'm playing a gacha game. It literally feels like RNG in terms of the whole game, everything that happens. And you can say that's a good thing because you never know what's going to happen. That's not Resident Evil. Because when they, that happens, the absolute most random, nonsensical thing can happen. Why, can, why, can, why am I getting stun locked? Why am I getting hit by one enemy and another enemy hits me, another enemy hits me, another enemy pushes me, another enemy hits me, I'm dead. Why does that happen? Why does one enemy push me and an enemy throws fire, I get caught in the fire, then I get hit with a rocket launcher, I'm dead. And the whole time I can't get out of it. Why can I attack an enemy with a melee attack and I've got no invulnerability frames and no AoE on my attacks? I mean, the one thing that annoys me which you could tell from my when i was playing it live my stand the normal difficulty was shooting them in the head and them not getting stunned i think stuff like what like what game are we playing here so as i said Re resident evil is a frustrating it's really frustrating because the game itself is amazing but the difficulty just renders the mechanics of the game and the experience of the adventure redundant. And it's just, it's weird. And as I said, there's certain things that just feel, in, like mercenaries doesn't feel like it's complete. Four characters? Really? I don't know how many maps, not many maps. Where's Ada? Where's Wesker? Where's some of the other characters? That you could put in there. Where's the multiplayer? I don't know man. Whereas the PS2 version had the full game. And it had Ada's story. Where's Ada's story in this game? So. I'm downgrading. My ranking of the game. Overall. Because of a difficulty. But the thing is about Capcom games. Which you already know. The game reveals its true abilities, its true potential, what it has to offer in its hardest difficulties. Capcom games are games that have got so much depth, they take years for you to find out everything. There's such a depth, such a layer of complexity 
to their games. And that's why Capcom games, people play Capcom games for so long. That's why you see like a game like Street Fighter. People will be playing that game for years and they'll still be finding out new stuff. People will be playing Devil May Cry and they'll still be finding out new stuff. People can play Resident Evil and even though they can play the hardest difficulty over and over again, they're still finding new exhilarating experiences and just enjoyment of the world because it's such a balance. It's such a balanced game like Resident Evils have always been that. That you can, you thrive in your mastery of knowing everything and going through that adventure and you feel it. And then you feel like you're going on an adventure with Leon, with Ashley, with Ada, against Salazar and everybody that you're going up against. Sadline, you know, the Las Plagas and Wesker in the Shadows and... The Ganados and everything. You just feel the adventure. But the way that the game is just... The way it tries to scam you. It, it, it sucks all the joy out of the experience. And also... And the only reason I actually enjoyed the professional difficulty as much as I did. Was because I got the armour with Ashley in hardcore now if I did not have the armor I know I would never be I would be so raging at that game because I had the armor and I'm never ever taken the armor off of Ashley she was not a liability to me but then again when I played it in hardcore because I played it through standard already it was not hard. Like her bits are designed for her to be able to do it without any difficulty if you know where you're going and what you're doing. There are literally no random factors to Ashley when you play with her. But when you play with Leon and Ashley is there, the random factors are just some next multiplicative level, bro. Where just the most random silly thing can happen and you die because an enemy grabs Ashley and walks into a wall. And then a, a, there's like a magical door or portal that opens up in a corner of the room that is a, literally a wall. And an enemy will walk towards that wall with Ashley and then it turns into a door and game over. You know, and this is the reason why I've struggled with this review. Because, by the way, secret if you're still here, this is actually my third Resident Evil review. Because all my reviews were praise, and then it went into a rant, like it has just now. And now I'm starting to realize I've been ranting about Resident Evil for maybe the past. 40 minutes something like that and it but it's unavoidable it's unavoidable and i thought to myself you're not going to want to watch this but i need to put it out there i played resident evil 7 resident evil village and resident evil 2 just because i wanted to feel am i judging this game, Resident Evil 2 Remake, too harshly. Am I seeing those other games through rose-tinted glasses? I'm not. I'm not. And I wanted to finish Resident Evil 4 in professional. Just so that I feel like, personally, I feel like I have the right to critique the game properly. Even though I don't feel like I need to finish the game in professional. I, I needed to finish it. Because now I realise, hardcore... Is the same as professional, except hardcore is the difficulty without the BS, the absolute nonsense skullduggery of professional. That's the biggest difference between those two difficulties. But I can't bring myself, my ego cannot bring myself to play in hardcore when I know 
professional is in the game. That's my review. I want to say thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you. If you're still here, that means the world to me. Thank you. Let me know what you guys think about Resident Evil. Um, did I miss out anything? Um, if I have, please let me know. We could talk about it. And um, yeah, we've got to have a good time. And I'm sure I'm going to do another review when they release separate ways. Right? A does DLC. And then that's going to have... It should come with DLC with Wesker and Ada. Right? And multiplayer. Well, I don't know if it'll have multiplayer, but we'll see. And, um, yeah, we'll go from there. Art Warriors, take care. Stay blessed. Catch you in the next one. Later.